MDCT. Thank you so much, Robert. Uh, you know, when there's a contestation, especially of, for power and positions, definitely there are a lot of uh, challenges that do happen, a lot of uh, unprocedural uh, things that do happen, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of allegations that come out of the processes, and a lot of challenges that come out of the processes. And, uh, in, in most cases, the processes of which we will have challenges at the end of the day, so that its outcome will be challenged from various corners, various centers. The previous EOC that we did on the 27th uh, December had its challenges, fundamental challenges, fundamental flaws, uh, such that uh, many contestants were not happy with the outcome, we were not happy with the main processes. I think uh, we have heard Madam Kupi outlining some of the challenges that were uh, met at the EOC. Those challenges are true and uh, they need to be resolved one way or the other. Those are the things that I suggest naturally, that those things must be resolved by what I call the internal reform agenda. Uh, the internal reform agenda must focus on those things that were raised by Madam Kupe so that it, 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 it we come together more, we get more united. Those are the things that must not happen again. That's my position. It must not happen again. It happened, it must not happen again. Because we want to focus on the bigger picture. We want to focus on the main objective of forming a political party is to make to make the party grow. Party grow and the party uh, for it to grow, it must be united. This is where we are going. So, some of us as leaders, we chose between uh, focusing on the internal challenges we had on the 27th of December, or focusing on uniting people, regardless of those challenges, uniting people and build the party, grow the party for the benefit of Zimbabweans. When I looked at the challenges that we met on the 27th of December. It was more directed to my personal ambition, my personal desire to hold a position. So I had to make a choice personally. Do I need really to have a position as an as a, as a individual at the expense of the, of the party uh, getting destroyed? So I chose to unite the party, to build the party for the people, not for myself. Uh, my personal interest, I will see it on the other later date. But for now, I could see that if uh, I had chosen to pursue my personal ambition for a position, I, I was going to have a damaged, destroyed, useless part. So I chose between the two. But however, I want the internal challenges to be resolved so that it will not happen again. So is the process uh, for that to happen started? It has already started. I think you've had a meeting that was held between the president of MDCT and the vice president, Madame Coupe. It has started. We want that to be taken very seriously. We want the party to look into those things and resolve them. But in the process, in the process of resolving, let us not destroy the party. Let us not put the unity at risk, we want the unit of the party to be to be to be really worked on, and I personally will be very much central in the uh, in the process of uniting the organisation. That is my first, my number one uh, uh, agenda in the party to make sure that the because you know during the elections, what happens is people are divided along uh, campaign teams. And uh, those divisions go down to the grassroots. And I don't want that. Personally, I don't want that. I want the people to be united uh, from the top to the bottom. That is, uh, people at the national must be united. People in the province must be united. People in the district, in the wards, the branches must be united. Uh, we must now focus on, uh, on the leadership that is there. We must support uh, President Douglas Monzora. He must lead us. Uh, regardless of what has happened, he must lead us. He must lead us. He must show that he's a leader. He must show that he can unite people. 
he must show that he doesn't hold personal grudges, he must show that he's not a factionalist by uniting everybody, accommodating everybody. And uh, he should actually go down to instruct his supporters at the lower level to unite with others at the lower level. Because if he doesn't do that, uh, he might call about unity at the top there, but uh, when it goes down, his supporters might actually continue to segregate, uh, fire other people, uh, you know, causing disharmony in the lower structures. And that's what we want to see uh, not being done on the ground because we want to make sure that we save this organization. We are not prepared to experience another split. Uh, we've had splits all over and I personally don't like that. I don't like splits and I don't want to see MDCT splitting at all. I will do my best, everything in my capacity to ensure that this organization will not split. And um, as you've said uh, that unit should not only be from the leadership and the pres your president should actually see that it scales to the lower levels. But as the national uh, chairman of the party, what is it that you have done? Or what kind of message have you sent to the lower levels of the party to say, let bygones be bygones and let's work for the unit of the party as we go forward to the 2023 uh, general elections? All party members in MDCT know that that I have sent a message down to the grassroots. I have spoken to them in our meetings. I have spoken to them in our standing committee. I have spoken to them in our national executive committee. I have spoken to them in our national council committee that they must be united. Let bygones be bygones. Let us forgive each other. Let us unite. Regardless of what has happened at the Ethiopian Congress, people must take uh, unity as a fundamental principle that must guide us for the growth of the party. I've argued with them that if you want the party to grow, you must unite, you must forgive each other. We have a lot, a lot of uh, splendors in MDC uh, and many people from other splendor groups would want to come and join us. They must be received, accepted unconditionally. If a person is coming from a group led by Nelson Chamisa and he wants to come and work with us, you must receive that person without any condition. If a person is coming from ZANU-PF and he wants to work with us, receive that person without any condition. We want to build the party. The party is about numbers of people. And if we do not have people, the party is weak and it will never grow. So really, in politics, we don't have common, we don't have permanent enemies, we've got common interests. If a person is decided to work with you, politically receive that person unconditionally. And uh, as a senior uh, leader in the opposition politics, uh, don't you see uh, MDC Alliance members as people that can come and add value to the opposition politics? Is it possible for you, MDCT, to work together with MDC Alliance? I mean, to sit down on the same table, iron out your differences and say, this is what we want. Actually, I get disappointed by people that hate each other because of, of political diversity. It is natural and normal that people have different diversity. In politics, you don't have to, to, don't have to create enemies because you've got political differences. You don't have to be enemies because you've you you got political differences. For example, I must not be seen hating Nelson Chamisa myself or Nelson Jamisa hating Morgan College. No, that must not happen. And uh, I don't expect that. And I, I, I look at that as uh, being quite immature. When you, when, you are, when you are political mature, you, you're politically mature, you cannot do that. We must not hate each other because of the political differences. Therefore, my call for the, to the opposition political parties, we are not enemies at all. We are actually friends who would happen to, to come from different uh, groupings. And uh, as po uh, opposition political parties, we must actually work together. We must actually sit down together, plan together, and uh, be able to identify our common opponent. And we must build up a strategy to make sure that how do we bring change to Zimbabwe. But that's all what we are aiming at. Whether you are an MDCT or an, you, you are an MDC Nelson Chamisa, you want to bring change. To, to Zimbabwe, positive change. And as long as we are fighting among ourselves, 
the, the change that we want to bring will never be positive at all. It will be actually be negative because we will undermine each other. But if we work together as eight opposition political parties and share strategies, share programs, share everything, we can actually move miles uh, uh, far much ahead of what we are doing at the moment. Probably the experience that I can try to share with you is how we handled the 2018 elections. We were not friends at all. Morgan Changrai and Tendai beat and the they were not friends at all. They were actually, they, they were once hated each other to the bone. But because they looked at the bigger picture, what they wanted to achieve was to bring change to Zimbabwe. And they said, if we come together in a group, group our, our political parties, we'll be able to score more votes. That is why we got more than 2 million votes. Because the people that were supposed to have voted for uh, Welsh Minnue and voted for Tendai Bit ended up voting for for Morgan Changirai. People that were supposed to vote for Jacob Nkari Vome and uh, Number of uh, Zimbabwe people were first. Uh, end up voting, uh, voting for Morgan Changira, and by by nature, by virtue of being uh, united, it gave the people of Zimbabwe the confidence, the general public, the confidence that these these, these women and, and, and men were serious to bring change to Zimbabwe. So what they did is, people from churches, from uh, vendors, from many other uh, uh, society organizations. Uh, developed confidence in this arrangement and they voted in in, 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 in big mind in big numbers they voted for for MDC alliance as, as an electoral pact so this is what we did before and we're saying if we had done this before why can't we not do the same thing in in, in, in the coming elections what is it that uh, Nelson Jamisa will lose if he talks to uh, to Douglas Monzo and vice versa and uh, if they really want to save the people of Zimbabwe they must, be, they must talk to each other, they must, they must find each other as leaders. Leaders are there for the people, not for themselves. Really, whatever differences they had, to me, as far as I'm concerned, are quite, uh, they are not important at all. Those differences can be ironed out, and uh, I would like to urge uh, uh, President uh, Monzora and President Nelson Chamisa and many other political parties uh, to come together and form a united front we should be able to go to an election in 2023 uh, you know, with a reasonable challenge. At the moment, I'm very much disappointed because we are showing uh, personal interest, individual interest, which will cost the people of Zimbabwe. We want to unite these opposition political parties, and we must not be ashamed of talking about unity. We must, we must be proud when we are a leader and you stand in front of the people and talk about unity. We must be proud about that, about that because this unity would save the interests of our youth. Our youth have suffered in this country in terms of unemployment. The economy is not, is not picking up, it's not growing because of you know, economic crisis and challenges. The women are suffering quite a lot. Look at it. We've got nearly 95% of unemployment in this country. And where do you expect the people to get a living? All other economic sectors are suffering. Look at the council, self-delivered. It's very, very, very poor because with the revenue where the, the councils are supposed to get revenue from, uh, which are the rest, people are not employed. And look at it now with COVID, uh, people can even sell their goods because of the COVID conditions and restrictions. And these are, these are challenges that any leader uh, in your normal sense must, must think about, must feel about it, that you are not there for yourself, you are there for the people of Zimbabwe. So if you have identified a problem, which I have identified myself, that opposition political parties have split, and the, the fact that they've split, they will not produce any result. They will provide the challenge, yes, of course, I know. There are some people that feel that they will provide the challenge, but that challenge will be very, very, very material because it will be quite a small challenge as far as I'm concerned. I have, I've been in politics for a long time, and I've been in organizing department for a long time. I, I know what I'm talking about. I know, I don't want to lie to, 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 to myself. If you want to develop a strategy, you must first of all accept your weakness. And splits, divisions among opposition parties is a major, major weakness for opposition political party in Zimbabwe. Yeah. So, uh, you work with uh, President uh, Douglas Monzora. What is his sentiments towards uniting or sitting, not uniting as such, but sitting down with Nelson Chamisa politically and say, let's build the opposition and make a formidable force? I'm quite sure you know very well that President Douglas Monzora at the funeral of our late Senator, Senator Java Rambana Pass 
uh, one of the messages that he outlined uh, was that Nelson Chamisa, my friend, let's, let's come together and work together for the benefit of the Zimbabwe uh, slave, slave lives. He said that. He, was, he was already outlined that. Otherwise, I'm just repeating what he said. So he is uh, for the idea that we must sit down and talk. This is for the idea that we must form a, a, a platform that will be able to make us win elections in come 2023. There is no doubt about it. There's no challenge. About it. I mean, he's quite prepared to do that. We are, as a party, prepared to talk to, to talk to any other political party. We are prepared to work uh, to, uh, with any other uh, civil society organizations. We are prepared to work with churches. We are prepared to work with anyone who is interested in bringing change to Zimbabwe. We are prepared to work with one the collective approach to this uh, to this uh, challenge that is that we are facing in Zimbabwe. We are not going to be selfish at all. We learned this from our our, our late President Mugin Trangrai that he was a unifier. He was a unifier. He always wanted to work with others. He, he was he, he was not selfish in, in his approach to the political challenges in Zimbabwe. So we are his uh, products, and we are his students, and we will do exactly what Morgan Trangere was doing. Okay. Let's uh, go to the National Dialogue, Pollard. Your stance is MDCT uh, previously, and probably now, is you are not going to join the grouping until certain conditions are met, or some of the things that you want to be included in that grouping are done. What is it exactly? that you think should be done for you to join that grouping and also sit down on the same table with uh, President Emerson Mnangagwa for the benefit of ordinary Zimbabweans? Uh, for the, for the uh, what I probably admit is that I'm a proponent of national dialogue and my president again is a proponent of national dialogue as well. I think you've seen how much he has talked about the national dialogue in our media. He is actually the number one proponent of the national dialogue because we believe that the political and economic crisis in Zimbabwe can only be resolved through a national dialogue. This we have learned from our past experiences. We have had the ZANU ZAPU conflict of the 1980s, which ended up in the, with, the, with the, the, the Unit Accord of 1987. We have had our ZANLA Zipra fight with the Rhodesian forces, which is ended up with the longest house agreement. We have had the MDC Changirai versus Mugabe conflict of 2008, which end up with the JNU. And this is where we are learning these lessons from. That if we, whenever there is a conflict of this magnitude, the people of that, the actors must meet and they resolve those particular particular issues that we, we do believe in. Yes, of course, there are efforts that are being put in place, efforts that are there, like Pollard is an effort. We are not against Pollard, we don't want to. Go, to, to condemn it or we don't want to, to, to but we are saying let us be allowed as well to put our input our input and uh, we believe that because we are positive about dialogue and we are positive about bringing change to Zimbabwe and we are positive about making sure that Zimbabwe is got peace we do expect the authority that are that is that are, that are there the authorities that are there today to give us an ear we don't want to to really attack each other on social media or we don't want to expose each other or expose the weaknesses of Poland on social media. I don't expect that to be the best thing because we don't want to appear as if we are we are condemning the efforts that have been done by the President of Zimbabwe. He has done quite a lot, uh, he has done quite great in terms of establishing Poland. I think his intentions are good. But uh, let us be given also the chance to explain what we think we can do to improve. The idea is to improve uh, the national dialogue uh, mechanics or or, or a platform. Let us share what we think it has gone wrong with Poland and what you, let us share with what we think if we do this and that the outcome of the dialogue will be beneficial to the people of Zimbabwe. So we are, we've got ideas that we want to discuss with the authority. We are not, um, you know, uh, confrontational in our approaches, MDCT. We are more of a a dialoguing team is the MDCT, so the authority must not be afraid or must not shy away to say, okay, if you've got good ideas about how we can improve our negotiating platform, please let's meet. We are prepared for that. And uh, going forward to the 2023 elections, what is MDCT, uh, what have you started to do as a party in preparing for the general elections? Before you go there, let me also talk about what I think 
about the national dialogue. Okay. The national dialogue should not be between MDCT and uh, ZANU PF. You know? We don't believe in that because that's a selfish approach. Because the challenges that we are faced with in, in this country are affecting everybody. They are, it, the challenges that we are faced with in Zimbabwe are not only affecting political parties, they are affecting all citizens of various natures. And you know citizens are grouped in various platforms, as uh, churches, as uh, vendors, as civil society organizations, as the labor movement, and many others, political parties and so forth. We want this, this dialogue to include all that. So, so it must be an inclusive type of a dialogue, which, which is going to cover the interests of all those people, the political parties. And in this dialogue, we, we must be cognizant that ZANU PF is a key element of the of the dialogue. So, so we must be, people of Zimbabwe must be prepared to sit down with ZANU PF unconditionally, so that at least we can resolve the issues that are affecting Zimbabwe. Agreed, the economy in this country needs a dialogue. Agreed, the political crisis in this Zimbabwe requires dialogue and electoral reforms. We we cannot be at this particular stage having not even agreed on any single electoral reform, yet we are left with hardly two years to a national election of 2023. We have had challenges of the 2020 to 2018 outcome elections because we, we, we felt the electoral reforms were not, were not uh, enacted. So electoral reforms cannot just come from street fights, media shouting, and all sorts of things. The electoral reforms will come from a negotiated settlement. And we must be prepared, we must urgently, this is an urgent matter, we must have an agent, agent, agent uh, action to make sure that the, the dialogue to deal with electoral reforms is put in place. Some are suggesting that we can use, we can approach SADAC, approach the AU, approach local leadership, local leaders in Zimbabwe. Let us use everything that we can actually be able to, to make use of, to give confidence to both actors, to, to, to all sides. We need to have a dialogue. I personally, we can have a dialogue from our Zimbabwe imminent people, imminent people, leaders in Zimbabwe, got people that can actually come together. For example, I suggest church leaders combined with business leaders, combined with society leaders, and, and actually make a platform in which you can push and force for a dialogue to talk about electoral reforms. Those are the issues that we need to do, and it must be inclusive of everybody. And uh, I call upon, I want to, do, do, to directly upon, uh, call, to call upon political leaders such as President Douglas Manzora, President Nelson Chamisa, and uh, many other political leaders that are there in this country to, be, to take leadership positions and to take leadership decisions and to make sure that they are there for the people. But do you think this happens because what they say uh, it probably is different from what we then read the next day in the media because you can't call for dialogue for someone then the next day in the media you are attacking the same person i think that is very naive and frivolous as far as i'm concerned uh, you cannot in either way don't attack each other as i said you are not enemies we are actually compatriots in uh, in different camps political camps we are actually compatriots because all what we need all what we want is the same. We are we got uh, the same ideologies, and the, uh, the desires that we want to to come out with are the same. Bringing the real change to Zimbabwe, we want to improve the political atmosphere in Zimbabwe, we want to improve the economic atmosphere in Zimbabwe. All things that we want, whether you are in any, which any political parties, are the same. Even some of they also want to have those things uh, improve. But unfortunately, they are the, they are they are, they are the authority. We need to face them and uh, make sure that we dialogue with them. So, so and again, the other side, yeah, when you're a politician, don't take personal grudges because we're too quiet. Because someone has uh, said, uh, call me you, uh, you are stupid, call me you, you are a fool. I will not take that. I don't even feel a thing about that. I have seen social media, people are trying, they attack me because I'm calling for unity and it's not dialogue. I don't feel anything about that. Was, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's very, 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 it's a small thing. I don't have any, I don't at all. Probably just I would, so, so, so I would I regard that as politics. So in politics, people say anything. That must not really affect your judgment at all. Probably they would say from some of the sentiments that I've read, how can you call for a national dialogue when you cannot call for a dialogue within the people that you've worked with?
political within the MTC family. Like what you've said, you have learned from the 2018, uh, before the 2018 elections and how you managed to get uh, 2 million votes. Now that there's also the split within the MDCT family, the dialogue they are saying should start from there. Then when you are united, we can now say we are a genuine... That uh, is what I have been saying. Yeah. This is what I have been saying. If you follow my, my tweet, my, my, my Twitter handle and my Facebook handle, I have been saying that. I have been saying that MDC, MDC uh, as a main political party of 1999, is split in several... In, in, in several components. There is a component led by uh, Achamisa, a component led by Douglas Mandora, a component made by Tendai DT and so forth. And the component led by my party Wenga, the PDP with my party Wenga. She's an MDC card. Yes. She has a good mm -hmm. MDC blood in her, in, her, in her system. And to me I'm saying that is not a, that is not acceptable. That is unhealthy. That is very unhealthy as far as I am concerned. I will be proud as a Zimbabwean myself if I see these people coming together one day shaking hands and say, we are IMDC, we are the original name MTC. We are back to each other now. We are now one family. Let us go back to our values and principles. Whatever happened before, whatever happened uh, among us before, let's forget about it, let's forgive each other, let's shake hands. Let us be one formidable uh, uh, front again. And this is what I've been describing as the United Front. When I then go to National Dialogue, I'm now trying to engage Zanu PF. I said, let us engage Zanu PF. Zanu PF is not, uh, is not uh, a, an opponent we cannot talk to because it's very key in our, in our solution. We cannot have a solution if we do not talk to Zanu PF. So we must be able, we must be friendly, we must make sure that we, are, we appreciate the political challenges of what happens in life. Uh, what has happened between Zimbabweans and Zanupia is not new. We have had far worse things than, than what happened between Zanupia and Zimbabweans. Look at what happened between Ian Douglas Smith and, and Zimbabweans. He murdered people in, in Simonio, he murdered people in, in, in many in gorilla camps in, outside that was Zambia and, and Mozambique. But at the end of the day, the freedom fighters had to sit down the Ian Douglas Smith. And they came to an agreement where there was a national reconciliation and there was a coexistence. And the, the government of national unity was then put in place in 1980. And Ian Douglas was served in that government after, but regardless that the minute killed so many people. We've had the similar challenges in the unity that is the, 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 the 1987 ZANU, ZAPU unity. After a lot of people, they were murdered during the Kupura Hun time. But leaders came to to a point where they said, let us talk. And Morgan Changra and Mugabe did the same thing. The, the people died during Morgan Changra and Mugabe's this era. It's, but if that has happened before, our leaders have demonstrated that they can work together. They can reconcile and forgive each other. What has gone wrong with the current leadership? What has gone wrong with Nelson Chamisa? What has gone, gone wrong with Douglas Mandora? What has gone wrong with other political people? They must come to each other, find each other for the interest of the people of Zimbabwe, not our own personal interest. I don't prescribe to personal interest, I prescribe to national interest. So I call upon national unity among all political parties, opposition political parties. They must make sure that they sit down with the, with the ruling parties and appear. They must sit down with it. And the national dialogue must commence quickly, as soon as possible. Otherwise, they were running short of time. Comparing um the previous government or the old dispensation under uh, the late President Robert Mugabe and the current new dispensation under uh, President Emerson Mnangagwa, in terms of their yeah, human rights record, what is your view on that? There is a, a, there is a, there's a, there's a small difference that is that is taking place uh, between the first dispensation and the, and the, and the second dispensation. There's need to improve on the human rights element. There's need to improve on the human rights element, really. The current, the second dispensation has found itself caught on issues of uh, arbitrary arrests, you know. The Joanna team, if you look at it, the Chimono team and so forth, the Alan Moyo team and the Macomboro team. The, these are issues that I believe can be resolved. And one of the issues that I want to deal with on dialogue are those issues. They, they are contaminating our country outside the world. 
we are being labeled as a rogue state, but I think that we can resolve at home here. I strongly believe that the human rights uh, element can be resolved by Zimbabweans, and I personally feel that uh, I've got a lot of ideas that that uh, I would want to put forward so that at least this can actually improve our image outside the country. It's, it's not worth it, some of the things that we see happening in Zimbabwe. So that area, the human rights element, is not improved in terms of habitual arrest, and uh, we need that to improve. What, where it has improved really is the violence in the raw areas, that ZANU PF MTC violence in the raw areas. Uh, that is slightly improved. That's a positive side. That's a positive, positive element. So we can actually f improve this area of human, human, human rights, and, uh, which is currently the number one enemy to, to, our, to our, the image of our country. And it has affected us in terms of uh, sanctions that are there. But you say, you say as Zimbabwe, why can't we sit down? This, this is why we want to sit down. This is why I'm calling for national dialogue. That is why my president is calling for national dialogue. Because things are solvable as far as I am concerned. I know you are a busy man, uh, Senator. Uh, you'd want to go. What is your message, the last message to the MDC family? My last, um, my, my last message to the MDC family, I, I always go back to say when Morgan Changira was in charge of the party from 1999. That is his family. The, but throughout the whole, the whole prolonged journey, other members have decided to leave MDC from 2005 when we left, 2014 when left. But the legacy that we must revive is what Morgan Changrai did when he was about to die. He called Tendai Bitti, no matter what, what Tendai Bitti did to Morgan Changrai's personality and image. He called Westman Mune, no matter what he did to, to Morgan Changrai in terms of uh, destroying the image of Morgan Changrai. President Morgan Changrai did not really, did not get bogged by that. He wanted to unite the, the MDC and he worked over that, and the party united. That was a great thing. That was a great leadership, quality, qualities that we must all uh, probably copy, all of us. He did that. So if Morgan Changrai, our leader, our icon, whom we believe we, 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 we all love, all loved, why can't we today do better than what he did? He had problems with the Esther of friends. Today we've got problems with Esther, our Esther of friends today. Why can't we meet? Why can't we talk to each other? Why can't we dialogue? Why can't we unite? Why can't we bring the, old, the, the original party to the state it was on the 20, just like what it was 2018 when we died? Why can't you do that? So that is my call to the MTC family. Wherever you are, let's find each other. Wherever Morgan, Morgan, Morgan Komich is, wherever Douglas Mozora is, wherever Nisoja Jamisa is, and many other leaders that are, that, are, that are important in this project must come to sit down, find each other, and have a united front.